cluster analysis is an analytic superpower useful to any professional, a professional like you. It doesn't matter if you work in healthcare or in government for a nonprofit, marketing, supply chain, customer service, none of that matters. If you want to delight your stakeholders with new and powerful insights from your data, you should build skills with cluster analysis. Now, here's the excellent news. You don't have to be a math wizard. Honestly, you don't have to be to learn how to cluster your data. Secondly, with Python and Excel, you have everything you need to delight your stakeholders with new insights that you derive from your cluster analyses. And by the way, if you're interested in learning more about cluster analysis and other machine learning techniques that Python and Excel makes possible, check out my free crash courses in the description below the video. Okay, let's cluster some data using Python and Excel. So as you can see, I'm in trusty old Microsoft Excel, and I have some data here. And let's talk about this data and then generalize it to the kinds of data that you need in order to perform cluster analyses. What we can see here is data related to grocery store customer behaviors. So every row in this data set is an individual customer and every column happens to be a recording, a record of a particular behavior. And notice this, this is super important. Every one of these columns is a numeric measurement of some kind whether that's wine purchases, how much money they make, meat product purchases, so on and so forth. And this data set is around a couple thousand rows or so. So it's a non-trivial data set, not a toy data set, but not a big one either. So this is super important. What you want to do is you want to have a data set where every row is a thing of interest. Yes, these are grocery store customers, but they could be anything. These rows could be anything. They could be patients if you work in healthcare. They could be insurance claims if you work in the insurance industry. Two things are super important. Every row needs to be a thing, an item that you want to cluster. And then every column needs to be a numeric measurement. That's super important, especially when you get started with cluster analyses. You want to use numbers, not categorical data, not string data. That's a more advanced concept. You can certainly work with string data and cluster analyses, but it's beyond the scope of this video. So you have our data here. And what we want to do is use cluster analysis to group customers based on behaviors so that they're more alike than other groups. So for example, maybe I create three groups of customers here. And what I want to do is I want to find out what makes group one different from group two versus group three. And that's often done in analytics. So customer segmentation is a classic example of cluster analysis. You take your customer data based on their behaviors and you try and group them and find new and interesting commonalities across those groups within the groups and then the differences between the groups. Let's go ahead and look at some Python code here. So I'm not going to make you watch me type Python code because that's kind of lame. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste my Python code. So how we start using Python is we use a new function called py. And you will have access to this function if you have access to Python and Excel. And if you don't, you won't see it. So with open parenthesis, notice what happens is that I'm shifting over to Python editor mode for my cell. And what I can do here is now paste in my code. And you can see here, this is code for me to take the data in that table that we saw in the other worksheet, which has a name, it's called customer behaviors, and load it into Python and Excel. So you can see here that another brand new function you get with Python and Excel is called Excel. The Excel function is your gateway to pull in data from inside of your Excel workbooks or from Power Queries to Python and Excel. And you can see here, I'm saying, hey, Excel function, go find the customer behaviors table, please. And then I want all of the columns loaded. And then I say, hey, by the way, Excel, there's headers in my table. So headers equals true. When you're working with Python and Excel, you want to use Excel tables that makes your life so much easier. You want your tables to have every one of the columns formatted correctly with the right data format, and then everything will just smoothly load into Python. And what you get as a result of calling the Excel function is something called a data frame. And a data frame is nothing more than the way Python represents entire tables of data. So conceptually, think of a data frame just like an Excel table. It has a lot of cool stuff that goes along with it. And notice what I'm doing here is I'm naming this data frame, this Python data table, customer underscore behaviors. This is a naming convention commonly used in Python. Logical words separated by underscores, everything lowercase. Now, if I hit control enter, this will run this cell here. And what I'll get back, not surprisingly, is a data frame. And I can click on the little card here and it'll show me a quick preview of my data frame. And you can see here that I have 2,205 rows with 16 columns. And these little ellipses here just means that there's more data that is not being shown in the preview, but it's still there. So I got my data frame, which is awesome. 
So I've got my table of data. Now what we're going to do is use a particular clustering technique known as k-means. K-means is by far and away the single most popular way in the real world to cluster your data. And it's awesome because k-means is actually relatively easy to understand how it works. But here's a problem. If I go back to my card here and I look at my data, the preview of my data, what we can see is that I have numeric columns, and some of them are values that are pretty large, like 546, and some of them are pretty small, four and two. And then we had income levels, which are far larger than everything else. And what that means is that my numeric columns in this data set are not on equal footing. The technical term is they're not on the same scale. Income is not nearly the same scale as the number of store purchases made. This, these numbers are gonna be far larger. So what we wanna do is we wanna put all of these columns of data on equal footing. So they look all kind of the same in terms of the numeric size, the numeric scale, and that makes k-means work a lot better. So what we're gonna do is use something called a standard scaler to scale all these columns to put them on equal footing. So let me go ahead and grab that code, and let's go ahead down this column, equals py, open parenthesis, and we'll paste the code in. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And what we can see here is that I'm importing a Python class called standard scaler. And this provides me the functionality for putting all of my numeric columns on equal footing to scale them. So I create the standard scalar object, which I'm calling scalar. I then ask it to then transform the data, understand how it needs to rescale all the data to be equal to each other so that all the columns are on equal footing, and then transform the data. So this actually does not change my original data frame, my original data table. It's still in memory, unaltered. What I get back is a new data frame with the data scaled. We're an, actually an object, technically a matrix, but we don't really care about that for right now. We get back the data and it's scaled, which I'm calling this customer behaviors scaled. So when I do that, I can now create a new data frame. And what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the raw data and then adding all of the metadata of my data table so it looks the same. And now if I run this code here, what I'm gonna get back is just a preview of the first 10 rows of this scaled data. So let me run this and if I click on the card, notice this. Notice the numbers now are all on equal footing. Notice that income is 0.31 now. Recency here is 0.31. And yes, some of the numbers are negative and some of the numbers are positive. That doesn't matter for k-means clustering. What matters is that notice that in terms of scale, in terms of magnitude, all of these columns are on equal footing now. That's the single most important thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this data frame that I've called customer behaviors underscore X, this data here, to actually perform my clustering using k-means. So let's go ahead and do equals py, and let me grab the code here. And what we can see here is I'm importing a new class called k-means. This is the functionality that Python provides me to do my cluster analysis. Now, when you use k-means, you have to tell it upfront how many clusters it needs to find in your data. So there are various techniques for actually optimizing how many clusters, that's the k by the way, K means how many clusters to find. There's different ways to optimize the value of K. That's beyond the scope of this video. Just trust that what I did behind the scenes was I found out that K equals three is a reasonable choice, a reasonable number of clusters for this particular table of data, for this particular data set. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating my K means object and I'm saying, hey, find three clusters. And then this is saying, hey, go ahead and try out 50 different clusterings and just return me back the best of the 50 because k-means, the algorithm works using some randomization, and every time that you do it, you're not necessarily guaranteed to get the best clustering. So if you do multiple clusterings, you can find the best one. And what we can see here is I'm trying 50 out, and it's gonna return me back the best of the 50. And then what I can do here is then fit my data. So let me take my customer behaviors, right? That's my scaled data, and I pass it in, and this actually does the work. It actually does the work of all the clusterings. And then what I get back are the labels. Okay, so let's just run this and take a look at what comes back. So what I get back is an ND array. We don't really care about that for our purposes. Let's just look at the actual values. And what we get here is 2,205 values, which is one for each row in our data set. These are the cluster assignments. Python starts counting from zero, so my cluster assignments are zero, one, and two. Those are the only values that I'll see in this collection of 2,205 values. Row one belongs to cluster zero, Row two belongs to cluster two, row three belongs to cluster one, so on and so forth. So I now have my cluster assignments. And what I can do is now I can take these cluster assignments and then marry them up or merge them with my original data set. And that allows me to do my cluster analysis.
equals py open parenthesis Python code. What we can see here in this Python code is that I'm taking my original data frame. Remember, this is the original unaltered data, unscaled data that I loaded from the Excel table. And then I'm adding to it a new column called cluster. This will store my cluster assignments. And what I'm doing is I'm populating it with all those zeros, ones, and twos that we saw from the last cell. So if I run this, we get back none because there's nothing to see. And let's start talking about how we actually perform the cluster analysis here. The easiest way to do this is to output the data frame, this new change data frame that has the cluster assignment column in directly into the worksheet. And that's pretty easy to do. So I can just go ahead and put my code in here. And what we wanna do here is actually change the value type from Python object, notice this little drop down here, to Excel value. And when I run this code, what'll end up happening is my entire data frame now gets dumped or outputted to the worksheet in raw form. So you can see all the original numbers here. And then most importantly, at the very end, da -da -da, I got my cluster assignment. Now this allows me to do really super interesting things. And what we're gonna do in this video is quickly go through a couple of techniques that you can use right in Excel using out of the box Excel functionality to start doing your analysis of the clusters. And these are gonna range from okay to good. And then I'm gonna give you a preview of essentially the best way to do a cluster analysis. Okay, so first up, what we can do here is we can grab all of these columns here. So I can just go all the way across here and then control shift down. And then I get all of my rows here. And then what I can do is I can insert a pivot table. This is an okay way to perform a cluster analysis. It's not great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this in a worksheet. And what we can see here is my handy dandy pivot table. Who doesn't love a pivot table? And what I can do is I can draw my cluster down to the rows here. And notice that what I get is just the individual cluster values, cluster zero, cluster one, cluster two. And now I can start pivoting the data in the context of these cluster assignments to try and understand interesting things about what's going on. So for example, maybe I say, I'm gonna grab age and I'm gonna switch this over to the average age and look at it. And I can see here, well, it's kind of interesting. Cluster two is younger than cluster one and cluster zero. Pretty interesting. Cluster zero happens to be a little bit younger than cluster one. So what we can see here is that on average, these two clusters are above 50 and this cluster is below 50 in terms of age, years of age. But maybe we can also look at things like income. Go ahead and switch that over to the average income. Okay, now that's interesting. Notice that the average value for income for cluster zero is almost $76,000, where it's about $57,000 for one and $34,500 for cluster two. That's starting to give you some insights, starting to give you some understanding of the differentiation between the customers in each cluster. Okay, but we can also do something like, uh, let's pull something else here. Well, how about total food purchases? Calculate the average here. Okay, wow. <laughs> so here's another characterization that differentiates each cluster from each other, right? Notice how the average food purchases, the average total food purchases are quite a bit different. So this is one way to conduct your data analysis, your cluster analysis, is you just simply use a pivot table. This is okay. Quite frankly, a better way to do this is something known as exploratory data analysis. And by the way, just in case you're curious, I do have a exploratory data analysis with Excel tutorial on my YouTube channel, which would go into the detail a lot more about what I'm gonna show you really briefly here. So the best way to actually perform, well, I shouldn't say the best, a better way to perform cluster analysis than using a simple pivot table is to use data visualizations to explore the data visually, also known as EDA. For example, I can highlight my two columns here, just for an example. If I go back up here, what we can see is that I've highlighted total food purchase in the cluster. My cluster is the outcome of interest that I'm trying to analyze in terms of an exploratory process. Right? I wanna know why customer is in which cluster or another. So one way to do that is to grab these two columns and then go up to recommended charts here and then pick this one right here, which is great because this recommended chart is pretty cool. So we can just go ahead and slide that in and look what we got here. Whoa, sorry about that. Move that, make it a little bit bigger for you. This is a lot more powerful than just looking at the pivots that we saw before. Pivot table analysis is okay, but this is good. This is a better way of doing it. And what we can see here is that for cluster zero, right? our total food purchases, we can see the distribution, we can see the line, right? We can see the line, we can see the line. So not only does this tell us a little bit about 
on average, right? We can say, well, you know, right about in the middle, right about in the middle, right about in the middle. But it also shows us like how far apart these values are in terms of the low and the high. And this is a better way of understanding what's going on with our clusters. We can actually look at each individual column in turn vis-a-vis -vis the cluster column. So total food purchases, income, age, all vis-a-vis -vis cluster. And visually, we can learn a lot more about what's going on in the cluster assignments than just using a simple pivot table. And like I said, I have a EDA tutorial series that will teach you a lot more about this. I'll put a card up in the video right now. Now, the best form of analyzing your clusters that I found is actually to combine cluster analysis with machine learning. And that's going to be the topic of the next video. And we'll see that here pretty soon on my channel. There you have it, a quick demonstration of how you can cluster data using Python and Excel. I've created this video along with others to demonstrate the true potential of Python and Excel. But to be honest, Python and Excel isn't for every Excel user. Python and Excel is specifically designed for those professionals that want to differentiate themselves at work by providing analytics insights that just aren't possible with out-of-the-box Microsoft Excel. If you like what you saw in this video, my next video is going to teach you one of my top techniques that I use as a hands-on analytics consultant. When that video is ready, I'll put it up here on a tile on the screen for you. And in the meantime, I'll put up one of my other Python and Excel videos that you might find interesting. So that's it for this video. Until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.